got every blessing to you all. It's been a good few weeks since I last made an open air video. And there's been a lot happening, really, since we last did this. The UK passed a bill through the Houses of the Parliament to allow same-sex marriage. It's one more step to an end times breakdown in society. And of course, nobody in the state church spoke against it. One Archbishop of Canterbury left, and another one replaced him. And the new guy will be no different to the old guy, yet another apostate. Ratzinger resigned suddenly and unexpectedly. And we are now waiting for the next Pope to replace him. Could it be Petrus Romanus? We shall see. But we aren't really concerned at this ministry because our High King and Priest is Jesus Christ, not the Pope of Rome. I've got some verses I want to read today, if I may. In fact, just before I move on, what was interesting to me was uh, once this bill went through the House of Commons, we had a, uh, a meat scandal. Horse meat entered into the food chain. Never happened before, and of course horse in the Bible is a clean animal, not an unclean animal, and you wouldn't eat horse in the Bible, so you got one more sign of the Lord showing his disgust, his contempt towards Great Britain. To our friends who live overseas that think that somehow Britain is still a beacon to the world, I'm afraid you are mistaken. Once upon a time we sent out more missionaries than anyone else did. Once upon a time we stood for the truth. In fact, we gave the world the King James Bible. Now, of course, we have rejected the AV, the authorised version, and we hold to all these new versions. And I might make a comment on that later. But, like I say, I want to just read a few verses today, looking at, really, how the Lord sees man, and how man is very much accountable to the Lord. One of the problems that we have, really, uh, is our belief that we are good people. Not only do the world think they are good, but many people in the church think they are good as well. These people, of course, teach faith and works in order to be saved. A hugely uh, problematic view and also a hugely offensive view in the eyes of the Lord. Because not only are you claiming to be able to assist yourself in your salvation, but in reality you are denying what Christ did for you on the cross you are saying that Jesus didn't pay it all for you, that you have to do your bit as well, which is a lie, it's an abomination. I want to read some verses, like I said, and I'll start from Lamentations. It's always good to go to the Old and the New Testament to get a healthy balance concerning the Word of the Lord. And uh, as Martin Luther rightly said, Scripture with Scripture is the only way to understand the Word of God. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 39. Wherefore... Doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Why do you complain when you are punished for your sins? That's how it would read, I guess, in today's English. But the AV is spotless. Wherefore doth a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Why do you complain for the punishment of your sins? If you break the law and you go before a judge, and you are found guilty, off to jail you go. You know that's where you should be going, because you have broken the law. And if you don't go to jail, society kicks off, and society says that you should be in jail. People expect justice. It comes from within, it comes from heaven. Why do you complain, a man, for the punishment of your sins? It's pretty clear, really, isn't it? Go to Romans. A future project of mine is to go through the entire epistle. Uh to the Romans, Romans chapter 2, I'll get there shortly, Romans chapter 2, and Paul says uh, in verse 19, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. You will stand in the presence of the Lord. You will stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, to be precise. And your mouth will be stopped. I've heard people over the years foolishly say that when they meet God, they will give them a piece of their mind. They will say this thing, they will say that thing. No, your mouth is going to be stopped. You will be silent. You are standing in the presence of the Almighty. Go to Matthew, please. Matthew 22. 
this is a very clear and unequivocal piece of scripture looking at again man's foolishness this belief that somehow he's good with the Lord that somehow if he meets the Lord he's going to be okay with him I'll read the whole of this piece of scripture because it's all uh, interlinked Matthew 22 verse 1 and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come free will man does have a free will regardless of what the Calvinists say man does have a free will and at the same time God is sovereign can you understand it no but nevertheless the Word of God does teach that clearly look at verse 4 again he sent forth other servants saying tell them which are bidden behold I have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage it's pretty clear the offer goes out one more time the Lord is not willing that any should perish he's drawn all men unto himself he came to seek and to save that which was lost but we know from John 3 that men love darkness mankind does not want to be saved mankind is wicked five but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise anything but the Lord somebody said once upon a time you can go anywhere in the world and talk to any group of people about any particular subject but the moment you mention Jesus Christ they scarper they leave the room quick smart Christ is very divisive he came with a sword according to Matthew chapter 10 to divide families the Lord will divide families if you love your family more than you love him you are not worthy of him look at 6 and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them but when the king heard thereof he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city 70 AD a picture of God's judgment on his own people yes he used unsaved pagans to chastise and also kill apostates ungrateful unthankful people he did it during the second world war he raised up Germany to attack secular and apostate and unbelieving Europe then he raised up Russia to attack Germany then he raised up the Allies to join forces with Russia to deal with the Nazis not necessarily in the order of course but do you understand what I'm saying the Lord will use unsaved people to punish other other unsaved people and he will use unsaved people to punish the church when he needs to be here the city is burned up Jerusalem 70 AD 8 then saith he to his servants the wedding is ready but they which were bidden were not worthy now you're not worthy you, you were given the opportunity to come to the wedding you didn't want to come you made light of it you tried to do everything and anything to avoid entering the king's wedding and now you are not worthy you've lost your chance and that's going to go in really to verse 14 but I'll get to that in a minute look at 9 go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage Gentiles through the Jews unbelief through their rank rebellion and the high treason the Lord turns to the Gentiles and we get a look in 11 and when the king came in to see the guests he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment this is interesting and he saith unto him friend how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment and he was speechless a wedding garment here is a picture of Christ's imputed righteousness this man had the audacity to stand in the presence of the Lord wearing his own clothing Romans chapter 2 told us that every mouth would be stopped Lamentations 3 told us that men have no right to complain for the punishment of their sins this is an affront to the Lord why are you standing in my presence wearing your garment not the one that I've given you 
Is my son not enough for you? That's what he's saying. Look at 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A picture of hell, of course. If you think you're a good person, and you think that someday you'll stand in the presence of the Lord, and you'll tell him what a great person you have been, look at this piece of scripture. Your righteousness <coughs> is filthiness in the presence of the Lord. Abraham said he was dust and ashes. Isaiah said we are filthy rags when it comes to how the Lord sees us. That's why we need Christ's righteousness. We need his imputed righteousness. We need his goodness, his sinlessness given to us. Our good works, quote unquote, are worth as they are dung. 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. He called everyone, but those that came were chosen, and they went off and entered into the marriage with the king. Now again, this is, no, this is uh, very much uh, a part of the New Testament, where the, the, the Jews are living under the law, so I, I won't stretch it any further than that. But the main theme, really, from Matthew 22, is that you need to be born again, and you need to be trusting in the finished work of Christ. As I said to you, you may think you're a good person, and in the, eyes of the, in the eyes of the world, you may well be a good person. You may be a wonderful person when you compare yourself to Hitler and Stalin, or any particular character that you care to name. But when the Lord looks at you, he says, no. He says, you are filthiness, you are sinful, you are depraved. So when the judgment comes, you will fall, and you will fall hard. So nothing uh, more to add, really, to what I've just said to you for the opening uh, moments as I stand here today. It's still very cold. It's early March, but uh, hopefully, Lord willing, spring is now here and uh, we can once again bask and enjoy ourselves in the sunshine. Keep on going and I will speak to you soon. Every blessing and maranatha.